we've now seen that demand in output markets and supply in input markets comes from households, and supply in output markets and demand in input markets comes from firms. And once we know where demand and supply in each of these markets comes from, we're ready to talk about equilibrium. Now, whenever economists talk about an equilibrium, we mean a situation where everyone, in our case, consumers, firms, households, workers, everyone is doing the best they can, given what everyone else is doing. And we'll say that an equilibrium is a competitive equilibrium if everyone in the economy is small relative to the market. So we'll say the equilibrium is competitive if everyone, households, firms, workers, consumers, everyone is small relative to the market. If you're small relative to the market, it means that you have no market power, which means you have no power to individually set what the price in the market will be or what the wage in a labor market will be. So let's start with output markets. In an output market, we're focusing on a particular output for some good X. And we put the price of that good on the vertical axis and the quantity of the good on the horizontal axis. We know that demand curves come from households. So each household has a demand curve. And we can add across all of those demand curves to come up with what we call a market demand curve. So that's just the sum of all the individual household demand curves. We can similarly add up across all the supply curves from the firms to come up with the market supply curve. So again, that's just the sum of all the individual supply curves of the firms. Now, whenever in economics two curves intersect, there's probably something special about that intersection point. At that intersection, we have a particular price. We'll call that our equilibrium price and put a star on it. And a particular quantity, that will be the equilibrium quantity in that market. But what makes that an equilibrium? Well, suppose that the price for some reason was above this equilibrium price. If the price was up here, then consumers, households, would demand this quantity read off of the blue demand curve. But at that price, firms would want to produce and supply this quantity read off of the supply curve. So now firms are supplying more goods than consumers want to demand at that price. So firms are realizing they can't sell what they're producing at the price that's above this equilibrium price. And so they're going to lower price in order to be able to sell the goods that they have. So there's downward pressure on price, and that downward pressure will continue until the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. And that doesn't happen until we get to the blue equilibrium price. At that price, on the blue demand, we can read off the quantity demanded. On the magenta supply, we can read off the quantity supplied, and they're exactly equal to each other. Or suppose that the price started below the equilibrium price. So again, we start with a market demand curve, a market supply curve. The equilibrium price happens at this intersection. And now suppose that the price were for some reason below that equilibrium price. Well, in that case, consumers would demand along their demand curve and firms would supply along the supply curve. Now the quantity supplied is less than the quantity demanded. Firms produce less 
than what consumers want to buy at that price. So firms realize that consumers are lining up in front of their stores and they don't have enough to sell them. So how can firms do better? Well, they can raise the price individually because they know that even if they raise the price, there'll still be enough consumers left over to buy all the goods that they have. So there's upward pressure on price by firms individually raising their prices. And they have incentive to keep doing that until the price reaches this equilibrium point where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So whether the price starts above or below, there are forces that drive the price to the equilibrium price at the intersection of supply and demand. At that price, everyone is doing the best they can given what everybody else is doing. Firms can't do better by lowering the price because they can already sell everything that they're producing at the equilibrium price. If they lowered their price individually, they wouldn't make as much money. They also can't increase the price because if they individually increase the price, consumers are just going to go to their competitors. So firms can't do any better. And consumers are doing the best they can along their demand curves. They're setting marginal benefit equal to marginal cost. So given that this price has emerged, they're doing the best they can by buying the amount that their demand curves tell them to buy. So in this case, we've reached a competitive equilibrium in the output market at the intersection of supply and demand. We can also look at the input market for labor. So we can pick a particular labor market, say the labor market for low-skilled workers or for high-skilled workers or some particular labor market. On the vertical axis, we're going to put the price for labor, which is the wage. We know that the demand for labor is coming from firms. So we can add the demand curves for labor for firms across all the firms in this labor market to come up with the market demand curve for labor. Similarly, we know that the supply for labor comes from households. And we can add up the supply curves for all the households in this labor market to come up with the supply curve for labor, the market supply curve for labor. Again, we have an intersection point where there's an equilibrium wage that emerges and an equilibrium number of workers that will be hired at that wage. If the wage ever were above that equilibrium wage, then firms would demand fewer workers than households are willing to supply. So firms are hiring fewer workers, they notice there are lots of workers out there willing to work for that wage and a somewhat lower wage. So firms can do better by lowering wages individually. So we would see downward pressure on wages until we reach the point where the quantity of labor demanded is equal to the quantity of labor supplied. Or if the price of labor, the wage, were below the equilibrium wage, the quantity that would be supplied by households is less than the quantity demanded by firms. So firms can't hire as many workers as they want at that wage. So what could they do about that? They could individually offer higher wages to draw workers into their firms. So there would be upward pressure on wages until we reach this equilibrium point. So in both input and output markets, there's something special about the intersection of demand and supply. It is the competitive equilibrium when everybody is small relative to the market. Nobody has individually a power to set market prices. The price will simply converge to that equilibrium price through the individual actions of the two sides of the market.